Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's still Tuesday, March the 9th, and it's 10.01 a.m. This is another um, some messages from the Lord, okay? These are from Dawn's newsletter from yesterday. And I got it yesterday morning at 7.18 a.m. Now, uh, this first one is short. It is from Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. All right, now listen to this. This may help some people that might be, be struggling with some things. When you fall short of your goals, put things in perspective. Many of your goals are self-imposed and difficult to attain. That's my problem. Then you beat yourself up when you fail. Know that my goals for you are reasonable and attainable. They are to seek me with all your heart and walk with me in spirit and in truth. I have sent the Holy Spirit to be with you and dwell in you. Receive him. Boy, howdy. That's the end of it. Well, I'll go ahead and read the scripture. Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Now, I was going to say, um, first of all, when I finished this, it ended with, I have sent the Holy Spirit to be with you and dwell in you. Receive him. Here's the problem. Many of us have the Holy Spirit, but fail to call upon him when we need help. Like, um, let's say, um, okay, there was a time that I, I had been passing out brochures a lot. I could make them myself. I had a printer. At that time, I could afford the ink before it went up so ridiculously high, and I would print off enough for everybody here on the independent living. And that was at the time about 80 apartments capacity. There's a capacity of 23 per floor, and there's four floors. But generally, it's about 80 uh, rooms filled. Okay. So, I was passing these out every couple months, something something to do with Jesus loving you and making him your savior and what have you. Okay. Well, I got called into the office by, I thought was the administrator here. Uh, when I met her all this time for years, I thought that was her. <laughs> And then I finally saw who was the administrator, and it wasn't her. So they must have called her in from corporate, from downtown. Anyway, because there's more Nolan Health facilities than just this one, and they have a main office downtown. All right, so there's her, and then there's one of the other ladies that work here for a witness. She starts getting on to me about... Um, Oh, I know what it was. It was in 2013, and people were talking about prepping for the three days of darkness or something. Like, we had to all start putting up water, that there wouldn't be any water. I mean, lots of people were supposedly getting this from the Lord. I started filling my bathtub up with water. And maintenance was called in 
They had to check my bathroom because water was going in downstairs. I had such a, a rapidly uh, emptying tub that it pushed through the the little area in the uh, pea trap, I believe it's called, because it's sort of shaped like a pea or a, anyway. Uh, every time I bathed, it would flush out. I mean, that tub emptied like that. I couldn't even get dried off. That tub was empty. And the pressure of that water pushed the hole bigger and bigger to the room beneath me. So every time I took a bath, it'd be bam, bam, bam on my door. They thought I was overflowing the water and they were saying it was my fault. And finally, one time they came in and I said, it wasn't my fault. There's no water on the floor. You can come and see yourself. Well, I had by that time plugged up my tub and refilled it. <laughs> I never thought there was anything wrong with that. I was preparing. <laughs> I thought that could be toilet flush and water, right? Well, that's when I got called into the office and they said I couldn't be passing out those flyers like that, that it's offensive to some people and I got to stop filling up my tub with water. She said, what if everybody did that? Whatever, whatever starts at the top comes down to the bottom, the weight, all that weight of all water in all those tubs can you imagine well you know they, they don't tell the truth uh, <laughs> they cut out most of the tubs and most people can't even take a bath <laughs> very few tubs are left intact but my very first apartment had an in intact tub <laughs> anyway I'm, I, I hope I'm making my point I got called to the principal's office to stop proselytizing and don't fill my tub with water. <laughs> anyway, so um, I didn't go down there. I should have prayed to the Holy Spirit first. That's the whole point of the story. To have him tell me what to say. If he wanted me to say it and not say something that I shouldn't have said. And so now I try to do that. <laughs> I try to remember, you know. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will just start speaking. The time I witnessed to a Jewish woman that read Hebrew at her temple, you know. She was very Jewish. And words were just coming and scriptures, you know, that I... I mean, it was clearly not me <laughs> saying everything right that I had learned in EE, e. Evangelism Explosion. But I can't remember stuff that well. It's been years since I took that class. Anyway, the thing of it is, is that we want the Holy Spirit in us. I said all of that to say you need the Holy Spirit. Now, when you're saved, yes, you get some. But you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I spoke about it in a prior video. I'm telling you about it again because it is so very important. The Holy Spirit is who helps us to be holy. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have more help. You get more wisdom. You get more discernment. You get the ability to speak in tongues. You should, unless you have a fear of it. In that case, you have to get rid of that fear, okay? Through heart healing and deliverance, okay? That's what, that's what Team Jesus does. The grafted in Team Jesus helps you with heart healing and deliverance. There's a blocking spirit there. If you feel you've been filled and yet you pray, 
speak in tongues and nothing comes, you may have a blocking spirit or some other kind of spirit. It could be lying to you, saying you really don't need to do this. And you're not even really conscious of it. But if you really think about it, do you think maybe you're afraid because you think, I don't really need to do this. Or maybe you saw a video about the Kundalini fake Holy Spirit and they were just acting all silly and rolling around and laughing their heads off. See, that is not the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, moving on. The next one is called the day of your departure. October 22nd from 2020. All right. Now this is from Glenda Lomax. And I I have watched some of her stuff, her channel before and another lady about the same time and one of them I decided oh I don't think I want to watch her anymore because she could see somebody standing before a mirror and saying uh, oh she said I can see you smiling as you try on your new dress because you finally lost some weight and I don't remember the rest of it but I thought Lord, do you really let us see into people's bedrooms? Is that a gift? I mean, some people say it's a seer, but I would I would think a seer is someone who could see an event in the future, not look at people in their bedroom. Maybe she said it wrong. Uh, Y'all let me know in the comments what you think. Let me tell you, this: the, the message sounds straight on, you know, like it is from the Lord. So let me read it to you, and you decide with your gift of discernment. My children, you must prepare for your soon departure to your true home here with me. You must make ready to leave those around you. Set your affairs in order and be ready to be called home to me as the day of your departure is quickly approaching and there will be little time to prepare later. Make your peace with those who have wrong you have wronged and any who have wronged you. You must completely forgive if you are to be forgiven. Use the little time you have left to make all right that you may be found in right standing with me. Do not wait, my children, for soon it will be too late, and some mistakes cannot be undone. Now there's scriptures here to back it all up. But she doesn't say you're going outside of time and then you're coming back, but there are other messages from other messengers of the Lord that don't seem to they don't have that either. But the rest of the message is right. It sounds like it's from the Lord. See, some people are just going to be happily surprised when they find out they're going to be part of the Harvest Army. Some people are not going to be part of the Harvest Army because they've already been through so much. The Lord is going to bring them home and just wrap his arms around them and get them comforted and maybe let them take care of the babies whose parents don't make it and or have to leave to go be in the harvest army you know what i'm saying but um the i think the main thing of all this is to make peace with people that you have any who that you have wronged and any who have wronged you that must be a really big deal to the Lord. 
We must forgive everybody, and I do mean everybody, who has wronged us, no matter how badly, no matter how much they hurt you, you must forgive them. You need to be able to pray for them to make it into heaven. Now, if you know they've already taken the mark, you don't have to pray that anymore. So, but you do have to be found have, having forgiven them to where if you met them in public, you could shake their hand or at least look them in the eye and say, how are you doing? I'm glad you're doing well and mean it. All right, Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Luke 12, 19 through 23. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine east. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. For life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment or clothing. That was a story about the man who planted so much he got twice the crop that he usually got. So he, he said, what am I going to do with all this wheat? I say it's wheat. I don't know what it was. I forget his crop. He said, I know. I will tear down my barn and build one twice as big or build a bigger barn. And then it will hold all this wheat. Instead of, I know. I will tell everybody in town that needs it to bring a big sack and come and get all they can carry. Now, isn't that what he should have done? It sure is. Let's move on to the last one. Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. I think he's serious about that. It keeps coming up time and again. Oh, look how this one goes along with what I just said. This one's from Bev Robinson. My second commandment is to love others as much as you do yourself. So love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you will always be looking for someone to love you. If you don't love yourself, deep down you are aware of the logs in your eye. When you criticize someone, this is when you notice to first take the log out of your eye then if someone else needs correction, then you can do it with no malice attached. Okay, I know the word says we are to love our neighbor as ourself. You do have to love yourself. You've got to stop looking at your flaws, your problems, your mistakes, you give them over to the Lord. Because if you hate yourself, you hate how you look, you hate that you're always messing up, 
but yet you love your neighbor, you're only completing half of that commandment. You see? It also, when you love yourself the way you are, you say, I'm not perfect, I'm a mess, but I'm God's mess. And I'm going to just keep trying my very best. But I love me, so I'm going to take care of me, too. People who don't love their self often ignore their own needs. They end up either getting too skinny or they'll eat foods that are like beans and rice and potatoes so they can afford to give more to others. And that just puts weight on you that you don't need and is unhealthy. You get what I'm saying? This is really unusual messages today. I know it. Must be needed to be said, though. You eat well so you can be healthy enough to help others. All right. Um, her her ver verse is from the NASB, and it's Matthew 7, 3 to 5. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. This goes along with judgment. I think, if I'm not mistaken, a few verses ahead of this talk about judgment. You're not supposed to judge not, lest you be judged, for with what measure you judge it shall be. Let me look that up. I got to look it up now that I started it. Okay. I need Google. That's just the easiest way for me to get it. Um, wait a minute. This is... Where did my... Oh, here it is. Uh, oh, it was an email. <laughs> I thought for a minute there I, I, I um, closed it out. Matthew 7, 3. I'll just go there. Let's put it in the NASB, which it's funny. Blue Letter Bible changed the NASB to NASB 95. So apparently that's when the first or last NASB came out and now there's a new one what would it be the NASB 21 or 20 or 2020 I don't know I'm going up to verse 1 yes this is it ha huh. thank you Jesus do not judge so that you will not be judged for in the way you judge you will be judged and by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. See, people oftentimes use those, or the first scripture. Do not judge me, because the word says, do not judge so that you will not be judged. And that's all they say, because they don't even know the rest of it. But it goes on. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? And so forth, what I just read. So that's Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. That's what you need to memorize if you're going to use that scripture. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Moving on. Oh, this is a good one, too. Many believers succumb to a pitfall of self-reliance 
through their desire for independence. Their quest for autonomy keeps them reserved and aloof, preventing them from opening up to share my gospel. Their perceived inadequacy hinders them from sharing with others the joy they have found in me. They doubt that I will give them the words to speak at the time, at their time of reaching out. Encourage others to act like they did when they first believed. See, that's what's problem with being wanting to be independent. And Kathy brought this up when we were having a, what do you call that thing, a Google Meet. I was telling her how years ago I was so patriotic that I had a, a red, white, and blue Christmas tree. Every ornament had to be uh, red, white, or blue, or some combination thereof. And I think I even found little miniature flags to stick all over it. But it represented the independence we got through Jesus. Well, we're not supposed to be independent. We're supposed to be dependent on Jesus. And when you try to be independent, then you don't have, you're not going to ask the Holy Spirit for help, are you? Because you're trying to be independent. So if you're independently going out there thinking, I'm going to tell the gospel to somebody, and you're not asking for help from God, <laughs> it may not come out so good. You may forget everything. You may get too shy to speak, you see. So anyway, always rely on God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to help you do what you feel led to do, and don't try to be independent. Be dependent on the Lord. All right, Luke 12, verse 8 says, and this is the voice Bible, never heard of it. That's why I keep telling you not to be intimidated. If you identify unashamedly with me, before others, I, the Son of Man, will affirm you before God and all the heavenly messengers. And that one was given to Kevin Robinson. Oh, this is a good one. Your, this one, yeah, they're all dated March 8th. Your longings are soon to be fulfilled. For you see, I am a rewarder of those who seek me. And because you have delighted in me, I will give you your heart's desire. Every good and perfect thing comes from my kingdom and just like a good father I want to bless you so extend your hand open and receive when you believe you have received it is yours bless you my precious one the verse given is James 1 verse 17 Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. Robin Robinson Bowling. Now, I don't know if any of you noticed or not, this is not the chair I used to have. I had a wing back uh, that was just a chair. It was comfortable enough. I got it for free. They were going to throw it out. I got that thing. I managed to. I got out of my wheelchair. 
and I leaned on the back of the, I left the seat. I thought that would make it lighter. Anyway, I pushed it. It was down on the first floor near maintenance, where maintenance and laundry and uh, housekeeping have all their offices and their supply rooms and stuff. And the chair was sitting there, and, and there was a little, I forget, uh, it's a bathroom accessory. And on top was a note that said, trash. Okay? So I, this was a Sunday, so I said, oh my gosh, tomorrow that's going out the door. And they'll throw it up in the dumpster. And I said, that's a good chair. I looked it over good. I smelled it. I said, this chair is perfectly good. Now, this was a few years back. And I pushed that chair down that hallway and into that elevator. And I managed to push that thing all the way to my room. And I had to walk back. I used the cane to walk back, down the elevator, back to my wheelchair, and I just put the seat of it in my lap and went on home. I had a free chair. Well, I was sitting here the other day about, oh, it's probably been three weeks ago, maybe. I was sitting here in my chair, and my feet were up on my ottoman, which is a tiny bit too high, and it gets uncomfortable. I said, Lord, I know I don't really need it, but if there's any way you could work it out where I could get me a rock and recliner, I would sure appreciate it. But, I mean, I don't need it. I would just like to have one. Wouldn't you know, three days later, this chair was sitting out in the hall, but it had a note on it. See, that first chair had a note on it. Um, So-and-so may want so I didn't touch it, didn't do much, you know, about it. I need water. But anyway, I got to tell you this testimony, how good God is. You might ask for a pink Cadillac, but you might have to go sell a whole bunch of makeup to get it. That's not what I'm talking about. I asked for a rocking recliner. It's not the big overstuffed kind, which is too big for this kind of an apartment. It was there. For three days with that lady's name on it and I had looked at I was looking at it when my friend came by and I said man I had just prayed to God if there's any way you could get me a rocking recliner I'd sure like to have one because I like to rock and that woman turned out to be uh, someone that works here, and they're not allowed to take stuff from us. Like when someone moves out, there's a chair there, somebody you don't want. I don't know why not. They get nothing. I don't know. They get a Christmas party. I think they get some other appreciation party, too. That's it. They aren't allowed to take stuff home. Well... I gave housekeepers stuff before. And they, I never saw them again. They got caught. I had a TV my friend gave me. I used it a little bit, but the remote needed replaced because it kept doing something. It would switch it from a YouTube video to a nothing. <laughs> Anyway, because I didn't want to watch TV, I gave it to this housekeeper, a very young, new housekeeper. She said, oh, yeah, I'll take that. So she took it all right. I don't think she ever came back. Anyway, the point is the dietary lady uh, must have decided... I know I'm not allowed to take that chair. I'm not going to risk my job over it. Because she, and she never told anybody. So after about three more days, they, they told the lady who was donating it to someone else who didn't want it. That chair has to go one way or another. And long story short, it's in my room. And I have it. And I can rock. 
all I want to. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, I love it. Because every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. He's a, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And never forget that. Okay. I will plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.